عشان نبتدي عشان نبتدي قوي Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we start an important session today. By important, I mean the important slides in the new era of cancer treatment, which is immunotherapy. I think we'll start by the first speaker, Professor Hisham Al-Ghazali, who doesn't want any introduction. He's the big boss of this conference. You know him very well, and one of my dearest colleagues and friends. Topic will be the clinical practice recommendation in immuno oncology. Do we need actually a recommendation to use these drugs or not in lung cancer and other diseases? Professor Richard, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. And uh, uh, this is the first uh, BGICS ITC clinical practice recommendation in immuno oncology. And we all know that the immunotherapy is the fourth pillar of cancer fighting after chemo, hormonal, and targeted therapy, and the successful registration of multiple, multiple, and several drugs, and uh, leading to areas of uncertainties about the best treatment sequence, the best treatment choice, and how to go for patient selection. So there is unmet need to develop clinical practice recommendation in this area based on the available evidence and expert opinion. And how is the consensus process working, uh, starting from the identification of area of, con of controversy, and then panel selection going to the drafting of the consensus questions, and then sending the consensus questions by email to all the panelists for editing, uh, for removing, adding, and then trying to go for the manuscripts, and now the manuscripts circulating to the panelists aiming for uh, a publication in peer re review journal, and this is the panel last year, and here the uh, expertise show, uh, sharing in the panel uh, uh, and in the consensus, and it was moderated by Professor Lisha Eamon and Professor Mohsen Mukhtar. And the strength of recommendation is ra was ranging from 1A, uh, based on randomized clinical trial, to 2C in the observational studies uh, or case series, or expert opinion. Starting with the concept, and the panelists agreed that all available inhibitors of CTLA-4, BDL-1, and the others are different in terms of safety and, and the efficacy. And again, the approval of one check inhibitor does not permit the use of the others in the same indication. And we all know that in the first-line treatment of non-small cell lung cancer, the NEVO failed to show superiority over chemo in the checkmate 026, while the bembolizumab in the KINO 24 showing improvement over the chemotherapy in terms of progression and overall survival. Also, the panelists agreed that the BTL1 expression is dynamic and can change at different times of therapy and there's a recent publication in the Cancer Research Journal about NEVO in patients with non-small cell lung cancer and those patients previously untreated. The level of BDL1 expression is less in those who have previously treated population, while in the Agrawal uh, um, uh, publication in the, last, in the ASMO 2016, uh, there is a stability of BDL1 in either treatment naive and the previously treated patients. Also, the panelists agreed that immunotherapy optimally should not be used outside of the approved indication except within the clinical trials and encouraging of cost effectiveness studies, especially because of the high cost of the immuno, and also encouraging the research activity in the radiotherapy and the immunotherapy 
which may induce clinically significant anti-tumor immune response. And here, the, how maybe this action and diverting the inner, the inner tumor to be immunogenic tumor by the effect of radiotherapy and releasing of the cytokines, the interference, and BDL1 expression, which leading to activation of antigen presenting cells and converting the tumor to immunogenic tumor. Regarding the testing, the panelists agreed that immunohistochemistry is the preferred method for assessment of PDL1, and each test result is optimally used within its companion molecule. And also, the panelists agreed that there are different cutoff levels of expression of PDL1 as indication of immunotherapy, depending on type and site of the tumor, as well as the line of treatment, versus, first versus second. And here is the sum of the cutoff values of the BDL1 in different molecules. So we find that it is important to assess in the first line the treatment of non-small cell lung cancer in pembrolizumab to be 50% or more, while in the second line more than 1%. While in the Lenevo and the atezolizumab, there is no need to assess the BDL1 in the second line and the development with cutoff value 25%. The tumor response to immunotherapy is regardless of BDL1 status in some tumor types, while it is predictive in others. And here there is multiple uh, evidence about that. So here in the, uh, in the uh, uh, patients with metastatic triple ne negative breast cancer, showing that the BDL1 negativity or positivity not affecting the overall response rate in cohort of patients previously treated, while in the patient with previously untreated having a better overall response rate uh, with BDL1 positivity. Also in patients with colorectal cancer with microsatellite instability high, the level or the expression of BDL1, either rare, intermediate, or numerous, not affecting the response rate. So the people have complete response or partial response, not affected by the BDL1 expression in this tumor. On the other hand, in the OX study, in the, in the second line, non small cell lung cancer, we have a bitter response rate, overall response rate in those patients expressing more percentage of BDL1 in comparison to those patients expressing less uh, expression of BDL1. Again, the panelists agreed that the pretreatment assessment of MSI could be used to predict the response. And this is shown clearly in the keynote uh, 15, 59, uh, showing the overall response rate in patients with gastric and the gastroesophageal uh, junction tumor with MSI have a very high, a very high uh, overall response rate compared to those with non-MSI high. There is strong controversy about the best method for assessment of response, either to go for CT and or MRI or functional imaging by best CT, the, uh, both 60% uh, versus 40% in the favor of CT and or MRI. And also the endpoints, the, the panelists agreed that the overall survival is the preferred endpoint for immunotherapy, especially with the high cost of the drug. And then there is a strong controversy about it is important to include also the progression-free survival, overall response rate, duration of response, and the quality of life to be accepted primary endpoint in immunotherapy trial. And we all know that the pattern of response and survival is different than those with chemotherapy with long tail of overall survival uh, based on the uh, uh, good duration of response with immunotherapy. Going to the side effects, the pattern of adverse events with immunotherapy is different than chemotherapy and usually manageable. And we all know these meta-analysis showing that in the five trials in the non-small cell lung cancer showing that the, uh, the adverse events are less in favor of the uh, anti-BDL1, BD1 therapies uh, in comparison to chemotherapy. And 
in combination, and this is very important, the probability of adverse events is higher. Either in immuno-immuno combination, like ab nevo combination in the checkmate 12, or in chemo-immuno combination compared to uh, uh, chemo alone, uh, I, uh, like in the keynote trial, and also in the chemo, uh, immuno, and uh, bifazizumab in comparison to uh, bifazizumab with, uh, with chemotherapy as in power trial. So the combination usually have more adverse events compared to uh, the standard uh, compared with it. And this is very important because it is important in, uh, in laterally in, in selection of treatments depending on the cost, side effects, and the efficacy. So also the panelists, 100% of the panelists agreed to go for a guideline and education for managing the side effect of immunotherapy. And this those, uh, was in January 2017. And in July, there is a release and publication in the ISMO for the ISMO guidelines for the management uh, for the adverse events of immunotherapy. Going to the combination strategies of immunotherapy, so the panelists agreed that the immunotherapy combination with chemo or targeted therapy is possible with promising results in some indications. And here the KNO21 and the non-small cell lung cancer showing improvement, significant improvement in the progression-free survival with median uh, 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 progression-free survival of 19 months versus only 8.9 months with chemotherapy. Again, uh, the EMPOWER study showing improvement in progression-free survival with the combination therapy. So we have improvement in the outcome with the combination, but don't forget the cost and the side effects. Going to the treatment beyond progression in immunotherapy, and the, the, the statement was, in all tumor types in patients with clinically meaningful progression, there is not enough evidence to support continuing the same type of immunotherapy beyond this progression. And actually, there is a, this is a summary for the uh, most, a lot of trials uh, checking the treatment beyond the progression with some benefit and the improvement in the tumor reduction with treatment beyond the progression, while others showing no benefit with treatment beyond the progression. So I think it is an important area for research and assessment for treatment beyond the progression in immunotherapy. Going to lung cancer, and the panelists agreeing to divide lung cancer into three main groups, oncogenic driven positive with BDL1 positive or negative, oncogenic driven negative, BDL1 positive, and oncogenic driven negative, BDL1 negative. The panelists agreed that the BDL1 status is not required for the second line non-small cell lung cancer patient management with immunotherapy, and this is very clearly shown in the uh, OX study with low uh, with overall survival benefit is still shown in spite low BDL1 expression. Again, in the checkmate uh, 17 and checkmate 57 improvement in first, second, and third year overall survival with no assessment of uh, irrespective of BDL1. Also, the panelists agreed that we must go for assessment of all targets before starting treatment in stage four non-small cell lung cancer, including BDL1, EGFR, ALK, ROS, and BRAF, and others. And this is clearly shown also in the NCN guidelines and this year to assess all these possible targets for treatment of non-small cell lung cancer. The panelists agreed that in the first line for oncogenic driven negative, BDL1 positive non-small cell lung cancer, BEMBRO is the standard of care, especially if there is greater than or only if greater than 50% the BDL1 expression. And we know that the Kino 24, and this is the recent data released, 
that there is improvement in overall survival and progression free survival and this is the last release of these curves with the median overall survival improvement of 30 months compared to only 14 months for the chemotherapy. In patients in the first line tumor of the first line treatment, if the tumor cells are less than 50% stained for BDL1, the standard of care till now is chemotherapy. And the platinum doublet chemotherapy is the standard of care of the, in the first line, and this is the usual slide we see that how the chemotherapy help and the platinum help an improvement in overall survival of the patient from two to four months to about 17 months with the add of multiple agents. Again, the combination, the combination therapy including the immuno and chemo could be a good treatment option in the first line setting, could be a good treatment option in the first line treatment setting of BDL1 negative patients. And here the overall response, the overall response rate in the, with, the, with bimbrozumab with chemotherapy compared to chemotherapy alone. Again here in the EMPOWER study with the Atizo Biva and the chemotherapy compared to the Biva and the chemotherapy alone. For the second line treatment in non-small cell lung cancer, the immunotherapy is the preferred option regardless the BDL1 status for most of patients. And this is agreed by 75% of the panelists. And for the second line, non-small cell lung cancer immunotherapy is the preferred option regardless the cell histology, either squamous or non-squamous cell lung cancer. And we all know this is the evidence behind this, including the OAK study, the Keynote study, and the Checkmate 17 and 57 uh, studies. Patients with treated and controlled CNS metastasis called, could also receive immunotherapy, and the panelists agreed for this. And going to patients with oncogenic uh, uh, driven positive tumors and BDL1 positive or negative, so the best treatment option is the targeted therapy either for EGFR or for ALK positive tumor with a lot of treatment option now, as, as you see here, compared to chemotherapy, have improvement and better progression-free survival. So, in conclusion of the non-small cell lung cancer can be classified, and this is the possible algorithm for treatment of lung cancer. In those patients with oncogenic-driven positive, BDL1 positive or negative, this is the first line possible uh, treatments, including the anti at our the target therapy, anti-EGFR, anti-ALK, or anti-ROS, or anti-BRAF, or specific TKIs for RET, MET, HER2, and others. The second line may include chemo, or second generation TKIs, or now maybe immunotherapy. In the oncogenic driven negative BDL1, both of more than 50%, the first line treatment is Bembro, with the second can be Nevo, Bembro, Atizo, or maybe chemotherapy with or without ramisurumab. And the, in the first line, in the oncogenic driven negative, BDL1 negative, and I think we can think like triple negative disease in, <laughs> in breast cancer, we must go for chemo, platinum doublet, and maybe in the second line we can go for immunotherapy. So in conclusion, immunotherapy is an effective therapeutic strategy that already changed oncology practice. This recommendation may help to guide practitioners, especially with a lot of uncertainty in this area, and tailor the recommendation to every tumor type is recommended based on the available ev evidence and expert opinion. And extensive research is encouraged in this area, started from dosing, combination, patient selection, and the cost effectiveness. And thank you very much.